Hey everybody, so this video is going to cover the uh, basic topic of inscribed angles and tangent lines as they relate to circle geometry. So let's go ahead and talk about the main concepts that are associated with these topics and get into some practice problems. Uh, first and foremost, the inscribed angle theorem basically states that when you have an arc which I am highlighting right here, um, the angle that is created by the inscribed um, angle that, that you see right here um, with its vertex on point C right there, the inscribed angle is always going to be half of the measurement of the arc that is formed by the inscribed angle's endpoints. And you can see that formula right there. So really quickly, let's just say for the sake of argument that this arc we're looking at right here is 84 degrees. That means half of that would be the value of the inscribed angle, which would be 42 degrees. So let's take a look at some examples and get into what this concept is all about and uh, just practice it from there. Oh, whoops, saw a little too much of that right there. Uh, find the value of each variable. Um, the first problem right here in example one, you can observe that the 150 is referring to the angle um, or the arc that is uh, that is highlighted right there. And since the inscribed angle is going to be half the measure of the arc that it corresponds to, the value of x would be determined by simply dividing 50 by 2, and you would get 75 degrees. So that is the value of that inscribed angle right there, 75 degrees. The other example, we have the 70 as the inscribed angle, meaning that the arc is going to be double that value. So 70 times 2 is 140, and that is the value of the arc that is uh, represented right there by x. Now for this practice problem, maybe pause the video and see if you can work it out yourself, and then hit resume when you are ready to hear the explanation. Um, so here we go. We're just finding the value of each variable. Let's start with A. Um, A is representing the arc that is from P to T. And since the arc is double the angle that is inscribed, we just have to do 60 times 2. And that would be 120 degrees for the value of A. The value of B, well... Since we already know that 120 is the value of arc PT, and since arc TS is an extra 30 degrees, what we know about this entire arced area in highlighter is that if you simply add 120 and 30, you would get 150, and the inscribed angle... Oops. Um, the inscribed angle that is formed by um, this, uh, this arc that is highlighted in yellow is going to be half of 120 plus 30. You just add up the two pieces of the arc that we had right here, uh, the 120 and then the 30. And then since that arc has the, um, the uh, let's just change that color really quick, the green angle right here is the inscribed angle that goes with this arc. It is going to be half the value of 120 plus 30 which is, of course, going to be 150 divided by 2, 75 degrees. So B equals 75 degrees. Uh, again, pause the video if you want to work this out before me. Um, find the value of each variable. The dot represents the center of the circle. Here's what you have to notice about this problem. Um, A and B are both sharing endpoints and are therefore equal. And, uh, oh, really quick, right there, the triple dot notation, that is just an abbreviation for therefore when you are writing out math proof text. Um, it's just some shorthand to use there. Um, a and B, they are sharing endpoints. And what I mean by that is this, the red dots that you see right there. Angle B has the same endpoints as angle A. Notice how both angles B and A share these red endpoints. There, um, the, the angles in blue and green are both ending at the same endpoints. So therefore, 
because A and B share the same endpoints that are um, dotted right there in red, they are therefore equal. And that means since we have a 76 degree arc that is representing the, um, the, the arc corresponding to these inscribed angles, we know that the arc is going to be double the inscribed angle, so the inscribed angle is going to be half of the arc, and the arc was 76 degrees, so 76 divided by 2 is 38, so that is the value of both the variables, A and B are both 38 degrees. Uh, moving along, the other half of the video is going to talk about tangent lines. The basic idea with tangent lines is that you are creating a perpendicular angle to the radius. The word tangent is basically meaning the line is only touching the circle in one location. So right here, that blue dot is representing the one location, which is noted as P um, in the diagram right here. Uh, a tangent line touches a circle in exactly one location. That is what the word tangent means when you are talking about a circle and a line line touching the circle, and the, um, the location of where the tangent line is touching the circle, it is always going to create a perpendicular angle. You can see that right there. They are using the uh, upside down T notation in this little diagram right here. And that is representing a 90 degree angle, and that is again formed by a tangent line uh, touching a circle. The other word you see here, a chord, um, a chord is just going to be, um, or actually I believe the next slide is going to have um, that example drawn there, so let's just jump over to that next slide. Uh, here we go. The, uh, the measure of the angle formed by a tangent line and a chord is half the measure of the intersection arc. Um, a chord referring to a line inside the circle that is not a radius. On the previous slide right over here, we have line PO right there. That is a radius. That's not a chord. Um, the chord is going to be uh, this line segment right here, BC. And it's the same concept as the um, inscribed angle examples that we were doing before. It's just you now have a tangent line and a chord, and that is going to form an angle right here. So I'll just darken this in red. And the same relationship where whatever the arc's measure is, the angle that is inscribed is going to be half the measurement. It is that same concept. So um, if let's just say arc BDC right here, let's just say that arc were um, 80 degrees, then that means the inscribed angle right here would be uh, 40 degrees. And that is just the uh, property when you have a tangent line and a chord in a circle. Pretty much the same idea that we were just doing, just the pictures are going to look a little different. You might see a, uh, a tangent line in this type of picture, or sometimes it might be a major arc that is being created. The same rule would apply. Let's, let's just say, for the sake of argument, uh, arc CDB were uh, 250 degrees. That means the angle formed by the tangent line and the chord would be half of 250. So that is 125 degrees. Let's look at some examples and uh, wrap up this video. In this diagram, uh, SR is tangent to the circle at point Q, highlighted right there. And then if uh, the measure of PMQ is 212 degrees, what is the measure of PQR? Again, if you want to pause the video and work it out, go for it. Um, here's what you need to first identify. Because SR is tangent to the circle, that means we know we are creating a 90 degree angle at that location. And we know that uh, PMQ is 212 degrees. PMQ is highlighted right here. 
and then I exaggerated the uh, the angle, the inscribed angle that is formed by um, arc PMQ because whatever the arc is, you just take half of it, and that would be the measure of the inscribed angle, and that is being pointed to in orange right there. Half of 212 is 106. The next thing, um, since we know that a straight line, which is S R right here, uh, a straight line has a measurement of 180 degrees, if you were to um, give it some measurement. Since we know the entire line of SR is 180 degrees, and since we now know that this part that I'm highlighting in green is 106 degrees, we can simply do 180 minus 106, and that will give us 74 degrees, which is the value of PQR, the angle that we were looking for in this problem. 74 degrees is the answer. In uh, this example, we're trying to determine the values of x and y. Pause the video if you want to work it out before me. There are, there are a couple ways you could approach this problem, and here's one. First, observe that we have a 35-degree notation here in orange, and then also in orange, I am highlighting the corresponding arc that goes with the inscribed angle right here that is making 35 degrees. Remember, the inscribed angle, 35, is half of the corresponding arc, so that means we have to double 35, and the corresponding arc is 70 degrees, and that is highlighted right here in, uh, in, in, oops, that is highlighted right here in orange. Now, the next thing to notice, this is the tricky part, we're going to figure out what x is right now. The arc, the or the angle that is formed by the green cord that I'm highlighting right there in yellow, uh, the green cord right here, and the tangent line right here, that's forming angle x. And the relationship of an angle uh, that is formed by a tangent line in the chord is again half of the intercepted arc. The arc, which is right here in orange, that arc was 70 degrees. We just got that from the previous step. So that means angle x, angle x because it is formed by a chord and a tangent line. It is going to be half of 70. It is also going to be 35 degrees. That is the value of x, 35 degrees. The value of y. Observe that angle y creates the arc shown here in purple. And if I'm just going to trace over this in red, we have a diameter. And a diameter creates a semicircle. A semicircle has 180 degrees of measurement. So because we have a semicircle in this picture, notice how the purple is showing you the, uh, the part of the circle that we have not yet identified. And then right over here in orange, I'm darkening it, darkening it in, uh, we already know that part of the arc was 70 from the previous part of the problem. Since a semicircle is 180 degrees, just subtract 70 from it, and and 110 is going to be the value of y. Um, and then, because, or, sorry, 110 is going to be the value of uh, the, the arc right there that I just highlighted. And then uh, half of the arc is going to be the inscribed angle. And half of 110 is 55 degrees. So that is the answer for the value of y. Uh, again, we know that this is a semicircle. And we know that semicircles have a value of 180 degrees. Since we found the value of x to be 70, we know that this part of the semicircle is 70 degrees, and we were able to take that away from 180 to get our answer of uh, 110 for the arc, and then cut that in half to get the final answer of 55. In the next example, we're just solving for x. Again, pause if you want to work it out. Uh, observe, we have a quadrilateral that is being formed right here 
by a L, O, N, and M. And because we have a quadrilateral, hopefully you've already learned that all four angles inside a quadrilateral, a square, a rectangle, a rhombus, any of those quadrilaterals, the angles will always add up to 360 degrees. Since we know that those are both 90 degrees right there, um, oh, I guess in the problem, it doesn't really specify that um, those those locations were tangent lines but um, but it, it was it was hopefully implied hopefully you inferred that um, because both of these locations would equal 90 degrees you simply take 360 equals and then 90 plus 90 we know that that is 117 and we do not know the value of X right there so um, that is going to create this equation that we can now solve combining some like terms uh, 90 plus 90 plus 117 subtract that from the 360 right here and you're left with an X value of 63 degrees in the next example, we're solving for x, and we again, uh, we have a tangent line right there. You know it's tangent because there's a right angle. And uh, pause the video if you want to work it out on your own. But um, here's what you're going to have to do. You uh, need to recognize, first of all, that the value of x being the same um, in both of these highlighted locations, um, because you have the radius of the circle represented by x right there, um, you know that these two locations are going to be the same values because all radii on a circle are equal. Uh, the next thing to recognize because we have a right triangle here, the Pythagorean theorem could be used to solve for our missing values of x. And I'm just going to go ahead and identify a and b as the two legs of the right triangle. And then c, side c, being the hypotenuse. And uh, here's the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What you would need to recognize now, let's just say um, x is going to represent a, so we have x squared instead of a. A squared and then B is 12 so instead of B squared we're gonna have 12 times 12 which is 144 and then that's going to equal C squared C is a little tricky you have to recognize that side C is represented by the X and the 8 added together and then that quantity, notice how it's in parentheses right there, the quantity x plus 8 is going to have to be raised to the second power. And a little bit of algebra with uh, quadratics and using FOIL, if you've learned that procedure before, um, to uh, create a quadratic expression um, when we do x plus 8 to the second power. Um, a separate algebra concept would have to be explained to really get into that, so I will just assume that you understand how to go from a quadratic of x plus 8 squared into the expression x squared plus 16x plus 64. Um, the rest of this problem is just simplifying, combining like terms, and solving for x. We can subtract an x squared from both sides, and then we can also take away 64 from both sides. So that leaves you with 80 equals 16x. Just divide both sides by 16, and you get a final answer of x equals 5. Uh, in this last example, you're just trying to determine is line segment ML tangent to circle N at point L? Really good question here. Pause the video. See if you can figure it out. It's just a yes or no question. All right, here's what you'd have to realize to determine if um, this line segment is, in fact, tangent. You need to remember the word tangent is meaning uh, means that there is a right angle that is formed by the line segment and the radius of the circle in this case. And uh, if a line is going to be tangent, then uh, it's going to create a right angle. And if a right angle is created and you happen to have a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem would have to be true if you plugged in the values of 7, 24, and 25 as A, B, and C. If the Pythagorean theorem works, if, if this statement, when you plug in these numbers, if that statement is true, 
then you know this is a right triangle. And if it's a right triangle, then it has a right angle. And if there's a right angle in this location, then you know for sure that it is a tangent line. So plug in A, B, and C. 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared. And then you get 49 plus 576 equals 625, and you will get 625 on both sides, which is, of course, a true statement. 625 equals itself, so therefore the answer is yes, ML is tangent to circle N at point L. I hope this video has helped. Please leave a comment if you have any questions, and I will see you next time.